Hello, everyone. After this nice introduction by Lei San, there's nothing much left to say about myself. Since uh, actually 2008, I've been working for the Global Ecovillage Network of Europe. And it's a privilege because it has um, gotten me in contact with a lot of very, very inspiring projects, ecovillages from all over Europe and actually also all around the world. And I have met so many beautiful people and it's, um, yes, it's a privilege. Now, Let's see. What is an ecovillage? I'm not going to go into this and bore you with definitions and this kind of thing because it's what we've been talking about all day and also those who are in the project for the last three years. Jen has last year changed or updated our definition of what an ecovillage is and the main um, differences or the, the crucial points in this that it now says it is a, an intentional or a traditional community because ecovillages, as you heard also this morning about the Savodaya movement and Jan Selegal, Kolofifa and many other places in the world can also be traditional communities that are retrofitting their villages to become ecovillages. And also in Europe this is happening in some places and there is a lot of potential because there are also traditional villages in Europe, not only in the rest of the world. And the other is, the, the point is that the, the, um, about regenerating the natural and social environments because at this point in time it's simply not enough to protect the nature that we still have. We need to actively regenerate it and ecovillages are doing that and it can be a lot of things and also other people are doing that. It can be reforestation, it can be creating um, biotopes with uh, making ponds or habitats for insects, for other small animals and it is very important. Then we see sustainability as having four dimensions to it, not only ecology, but also the social, the cultural worldview dimension and the economic dimension. And they are um, integrated into a holistic approach. That is how we perceive sustainability in ecovillages. And actually, of course, often people ask me, well, what's the ecovillage, what's that about? And the shortest thing I have to say about that is uh, it's having less on the material side of things while at the same time having a higher standard of living through a rich cultural and social life, which is different to the picture that some other people are painting where they're saying, okay, we can't go on the way we're doing. We have to reduce our consumption. We have to cut down our luxuries and it feels like, oh my God, okay, we have to do that. And it feels like a sacrifice. And we, we have a different proposal to that. Ecovillages in Europe, this is the map, an interactive map we have created on the Gen Europe website where we have a, an ecovillage database that you're welcome to look at if you find the time. I could say a lot about what Jen is actually doing, but there won't be time for this in this presentation. We, you could say that the Jen has four main working areas. One is about networking, and that is all this exchange between ecovillages and the, where I met all these wonderful people. And uh, education, Jen is designing educational programs and delivering education. Actually, it's mostly the ecovillages, not Jen as a network doing that, but it's very central. And information dissemination and advocacy, Gen Europe would be the also natural body to advocate for ecovillages on the 
EU level and ecovillages themselves are doing it on the local areas with the local municipality and local governments and national networks are doing it in their countries. Well, <laughs> this was at the Gen Europe Assembly this year. <laughs> so some people of our networks. No? Aha. Uh -huh. Now, I'm supposed to present you a few ecovillages and I have decided to not choose the obvious ones that um, have been mentioned also in other presentations and maybe most of you, many of you have heard about them already, so it's not Finthorn, it's not Orville, it's something else for a change. This one, Amo de Bouy, is an ecovillage in the France Alps. It is it's been established in 2001, so it's also more recent than the big well-known eco-villages, maybe. It has six hectares and 20 houses, and um, a diverse group of people living there with, many, with um, several generations, also families and children and older people. And the centerpiece of this eco-village is the Montessori school that they are running. Actually, in this case, the school was there first, and after that, the eco-village was added. These are just some pictures of the architecture and the place. The school is called La Ferme des Enfants, and it has... Um, Courses for all ages from kindergarten to 18 years. And they, um, they cooperate also with the farm that's also part of the eco-village. It's very central contact with, between the children and the animals. It's very um, central in their work. And the school is based on the Montessori uh, philosophy that you may have heard about. It's a, um, alternative pedagogical approach. This is some pictures of the farm that they are also running. And like so many eco-villages, they have an education center, they run courses. They run courses on organic gardening and agriculture and on um, pedagogical themes and on a variety of other things. So they have guests coming, people coming, both um, courses aimed at locals and also some residential courses. And they've been restoring the, one of the education center with the help of a lot of volunteers that have been coming to stay for a while in their eco-village. Now we move to a different part of Europe, Ireland. Also, this is a more recent, even more recent than Abu Dhabi. Uh, the first, it, the planning stage before that has been going on for for years and years, but now the first houses have been finished in 2009, and people have started moving there, and they are also still building and adding on to this eco village. Special about this is that they are very closely linked up also with the transition movement with Transition Ireland and they are very closely integrated into the, the town, Clough Jordan, that's been there before them. So basically the Echo Village is becoming like an extension of the town. So these are some pictures of some of the houses and activities and their vision is being um, and um, a model, a model settlement, and that is a common theme among eco-villages, not all eco-villages. There are also eco-villages who are mostly just living there, being there, doing their own thing, but many eco-villages want to be a model for society and therefore all this education that is happening and people coming, volunteering opportunities in eco-villages. So this is a a drawing of the, the, the plan of what it's going to be like one day and a photo. 
and uh, some of the facilities or initiatives that are inside the eco-village, the, do you know what CSI means? It means Community Supported Agriculture. They have tourism, they run courses, they have an, an education center, and they have an eco-hostel in the village. I'm going through this quickly because 20 minutes are short. <laughs> so just enjoy the pictures. So as I said, they have um, educational activities and of course the community building through various well, working together activities or other. Okay, now we move to still a different part of the world, but the Konohama family has been mentioned before this morning by Karen. It's quite a big community with 85 adult members and they have a, a footprint study. Their footprint is quite low, actually. They're an income sharing community, which the other two that I've presented are not. That means they, um, they run businesses together and the surplus that is coming in is shared equally between all the members. And the members who work in the business have all their needs met, accommodation, food, and all the basic needs are met by the community and is paid for with the income of the businesses that they are running. There are many different models of shared economy or partly shared economy, so that's a long topic. Yes, um, Konohama family is a spiritual community. Uh, and I have to go faster because I have five minutes only. They have a big farm that they're working on and they also make bread and um, cookies and other products that they then sell. They are very self-sufficient in food supplies. They buy only very few things. And what impressed me most is that they have a community meeting every evening. Every evening the community meets and they discuss everything that might need to be said. And they've been doing this for 19 years, every day. They run an EDE course every year, Ecovillage Design Education. That is a four-week program that was developed by Jen. No? Come on. So this is them. And now I will talk about the eco-village I know best, Siebenlinen, where I live. <laughs> and I think we have to be very fast. We're at the moment 100 adults and 40 children, and we want to become 250, maybe 300 people living there. Yes, our motto is unity in diversity, and that are both very important elements in community. So this is a picture of the buildings we have. We're building a new village which is unique in Germany because usually you can only add on to existing villages, and we got planning permission for six hectares outside of an existing village, so that is very special. This is an old picture of what it's um, been like in the past. This is an old farm building that was uh, retrofitted. And these are the first two residential houses that have been built. And now, unfortunately, this picture is taken from a different angle. So here, you cannot see the pond that was on the other picture because the plants have grown so much. And this is the, the amphitheater that was there on the previous picture also. Siebenlinen is mostly famous for straw bale building. We have very strict, um, in the community, just by ourselves, we have very strict um, rules about ecological building standards that we apply to all the houses that are being built in Siebenlinden. 
So these are some examples. This um, was the biggest strawberry house <laughs> in Europe for a few months, but then a bigger one has been built <laughs> very shortly after. This is um, what we call a passive house that has passive solar design, but that's not what we mean. It's not supposed to require any energy input for heating once the, the, the water has warmed up sufficiently. There's a huge big water tank in the center of the house, but it takes a few years until that's um, warmed up during summer well enough. So these are high-tech houses, like the kind of houses where you're not supposed to open the window in the um, winter because it uh, interferes with the ventilation system. But this is a low-tech building. It's a straw bale dome and it needs a roof on top of it because it rains so much that uh, you can't just leave it. It would get destroyed and the, these are two actually, I think you can't see, there's one there's one behind there and the one, one is a bathroom and the other is um, a multi-purpose room. We use solar energy a lot, like passive solar design is one thing, but we also have solar panels for warm water and heating and photovoltaic panels also. And also here you can have high-tech solutions and low-tech solutions. We have an organic farm and we produce about 70% of the vegetables that we consume, including our guests, because we have a big seminar center with the courses running 11 months every year. Now other ecological features we, features, we have a closed water circle, cycle. We have two wells, we have a reed bed, water purification system. We use only gas for cooking, some people use wood. We have only wood heating and solar heating. We don't use electricity for heating anything, neither water nor heating the houses. We have only composting toilets. We have, um, we have our own forest where we cut firewood and that we are also redesigning to mix forest because at the moment it's pine tree monoculture which is different from forest. This is the extension to the education center that we built last year and this is a community meeting we have many rituals and um, ways how we create a group feeling for in the community and how we get together as a community and it's complex and I'm not going to get into it. But once a year we meet for a whole week where we meet in the morning, in the afternoon and in the evening for seven days in a row and it's mostly about emotional exchange and it's I think the centerpiece of what keeps our community going and this was last year during that community retreat and we're going to have one next week <laughs> actually the next yeah there is um, artwork um, music all sorts of things on cultural and social life and Faster, faster, faster. We have a big education center. I mentioned that already. We have also a lot of tourists who come and people who come on guided tours. And we also have an eco-village design education course every year. What happened? Well, something is wrong here with the pictures, but they're just some pictures. Huh, better. And... Um, this is a group photo that we've taken last year. And thank you very much for your attention. I have brought Jane Europe flyers. If you'd like to take some home, please do. I'll leave them here. <laughs>